What's going on everybody? It's your boy Parker Beats. And before I start this video, I just want to um apologize if this video is long. I just uh just talked to myself and was trying to figure out what to say and so if I ramble on, um I do apologize, just bear with me. So this is chapter two of the Good Life book, and if you don't know what the Good Life book is, you can go back and you can click and watch the uh the first chapter. So the second chapter is the good teacher, and he says, Our hearts are like the GPS of our entire being, but broken and lead the wrong way. And I completely agree with that. See, God wants us to follow him, right? But the problem is, is if we constantly rely on our heart to make the toughest decisions, and I mean without talking to anybody, just just going personally, like not even with a gut feeling or even with thinking about it, but just with your heart, you're going to end up in a lot of bad situations and a lot of messes. We need to follow somebody who is going to lead us. God's not taking control over your body. I mean, he's not making your every move. He's given us the free will to move as we should. But he wants us to go out and, and follow him and tell other people about who he is, right? He is the GPS. We need him to guide us through life. So I had a couple points. Uh, the first point, or through the book that I found, uh, God is all-powerful. He's the creator, the sustainer, the owner of all things, which obviously I completely agree with, and that needs to be um, known. And then Trip Lee, who is the author of the book, he made a great analogy when he talks about how could they tell Dr. Naismith how to play the game he created. Now, if you don't know who Naismith is, Dr. James Naismith, he is the creator of the sport we like to call basketball. And what he's saying is that the main creator of that game, um, how could they tell him how to play the game that he invented? And it's the same way with God, is that how can we tell God, you know, these different things when this is the world that he created? I mean, he created us. He gave us life. So how can we tell him different? How can we say that, oh, this was this or, or this was that? I mean, what what he's trying to get ac um, across is that God is the creator and he's gonna be with us like I said he wants us to follow him um, so we belong to the creator he will never lose power and never leave his authority I mean he is a king he understands that but he's not giving the power over to somebody else right he's gonna constantly stay in power and we need to keep relying on him for that strength and that grace Cause trust me patience pays off Number two is uh, he is good. And so he talks about leaders and so specifically um, politicians, kind of people in power. I've, I've read, I've learned a lot about politicians from other YouTubers and from um, history class. You know, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, of course he was a prince. But um, anyways, he says leaders can lose reputation and trust and not get it back. And that simply put is that they... They almost go to a level where they just, they promise too much, right? You look at what Obama said. He's a president. I understand that. But people need to understand he can't fix everything in four years. This is a broken world. It's constantly going to have problems and it's going to fall. And he's in his second term now, right? Because people still believe that he can make a change. I mean, I think he's definitely making a change um, in the United States. And in a sense, it does um, affect Canada. But in just looking at it, though, is that sometimes politicians, right? You're never going to see two politicians who are going like, you know, how they're usually in, in battle, I guess, with different, you know, debates and having commercials. I'm saying you'd never see two of them being friendly and being like, you know, he's a respectable leader. I think he will um, definitely do great if he was put into this position. Oh, no, 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 you can't say that. I think you're the one. See, you would never see that, right? They're both hating on each other, and then they're making these expectations and these promises that they can't fulfill, and that's why people lose their trust and their reputation, especially with scandals and all that different stuff. And Oh, it's just a mess. And so then he says, God will never leave, and he has never failed as a leader. And this um, this next sentence, um, just pay attention. He says, the decay in our hearts is exposed by the death in our actions. Now, to me, that is 
absolutely incredible. Like when I first read that, that blew me away. Now that is something. Um, just take time to think about what that means and and what it's saying. And he also talked about Psalms uh, one forty five seventeen. If you guys want to look that up. So the third point is follow him because he desires good for us. So God wants us to follow him. I understand that. He doesn't control our life. I get that. He is the leader. He has the authority and he makes promises that he can keep. Right? Patience pays off. Okay, I understand that. But him wanting good for us? I don't get it. Because I still sin and I still make mistakes. I don't... I don't really understand that. See, it's all about that, but it's about trusting God even through those dark times, right? Like when my grandma suddenly passed away, it's a difficult time, but you still got to put your trust in God. Whether you're young, whether you're old, you constantly got to put your trust in God through the, the good or the bad. Check out Job. I mean, he lost everything. He almost gave up on God. I mean, I I haven't taken school, okay? I haven't taken Bible school, so I don't know if there's different things behind that. But what I do get out of the main point is that we definitely do need to trust God. He is the teacher, and honestly, I know in high school, I didn't really listen. But trust me, listening does pay off. I'll tell you that right now. Um, his good gifts can only be rightly enjoyed in their proper context. Our hearts grab hold of the things and forget where they came from. And then the last thing he kind of talks about is that he loves us so much that he sent his son, you know, to die for our sins. And then he also said, um, James 1.17. Um, honestly, this was an incredible chapter. There was a lot that I got out of it. So next week I will do chapter three but really just to summarize um definitely listen understand that god makes promises that he can keep keep pursuing that faith keep pursuing god regardless whether you uh believe or not and i'll uh, just have a good week honestly things may get busy they may get stressful they may get frustrating find rest in god because he will definitely be there so anyways that's it um, hopefully rap first Wednesday, but that's the end of it. So, deuces.